Hi and welcome to a new video. In this one we're going to be discussing our top 10 Django tips. So grab a notepad and a pen and let's get started. Number one, always start with the models. Don't rush into the project. It's much more efficient to plan out your models first, even if they're written on paper or informally in a TXT file. A rough guideline of what kind of data you want to store can actually help a lot in the long run and you'll have a much clearer idea of what you want to do with that data and then how to achieve that. Number two, create shortcut methods on your models. A lot of the time we can outsource some functionality from our views and our templates to the actual models themselves. And this helps a lot in the long run as our shortcut methods can save us quite a bit of time in repeating ourselves and thus keeping our code nice and dry. Number three, use reverse instead of hard coded URLs. This one comes straight from the Django developers themselves. When we define our URL paths, we can actually specify a name to each URL and a namespace to each group of URLs inside an app. Now this becomes important when defining redirect methods such as the get absolute URL method. If we define our URL method to return a hard coded URL such as slash users, and we change our path to be something like slash members, our application will break. Whereas if we use reverse of the user's URL name, such as reverse of users, we can change the URL path to whatever we want and the application won't break because our reverse call can still take us to that URL path. Number four, use the URL template syntax instead of hard-coded URLs. Now this is similar to the last point, except now we're working in our templates. Again, if we hard code the URL, our application will break if we decide to change the path. Whereas if we use this URL template syntax, we can change the path and our app won't break. And this becomes even more important in our HTML templates because HTML is a lot messier to clean than our views and our other Python scripts. Number five, select only what you need. This comes as a database query optimization. Whether your app is small or big, efficient database queries can make all the difference in performance. Every time a query is made to retrieve an object, another query is made to retrieve its fields or values that are being called. So let's say there were 1000 orders on your e-commerce site and you want to display the order number, price and quantity of the order model. But there are another 40 fields on the model. Now to query the database for all the object details would be unnecessary because you aren't showing all of that information. So instead, keeping it nice and short, you can use the objects.values syntax and then pass in the name of the fields that you want to get from the model, thus only pulling the data that you actually need and reducing the number of queries that you make to the database. Number six, keep your users informed. We all know the feeling of completing some action on a website, such as filling in a contact form and not knowing whether the data was actually submitted. And this is why you'll want to inform your users when an event was successful. And you can simply achieve this using Django's message framework. And no, this is not an actual messaging framework like WhatsApp. It's a way of displaying information to the user, simply importing it from Contrib and showing the user with simple syntax such as messages.info passing in the request and then the message you want to show can really help the user know their action is actually working. And overall, this improves the user experience dramatically. Number seven, use the Python shell. This one is really underrated. One of the smaller reasons why to use it, especially as a beginner, is to help grasp Django overall. Because you have to import everything manually, it really helps solidify where each function is imported from. On a deeper level though, objects and instances can be created in the shell and actually are created in the database when you do so. And this makes it very convenient if you want to quickly add some test instance instances to the database and not have to log into the admin to do so, especially if these models have a ton of fields and take really long to manually fill out. Number eight. Keep writing unit tests. Django provides a default file test.py that is added to the apps in our project. Additionally, Django's test case is extremely simple and easy to use 
for testing your applications. A CRUD app can have its full test cases done within just a couple of minutes and it's also a good habit to get into writing tests so that other users can see that what you've built actually works. Number nine, work with multiple settings files. This one can be a bit tricky for new Django users, but basically we can define a settings.py file for our production environment and one for our development environment separately. So this becomes very necessary as the project grows. And the last thing you'll want to be doing is saying if debug is true, then define a whole bunch of other settings. And our settings file can get quite large quite quickly. So this tip actually comes in as one of the best tips for overall productivity and definitely is something worth considering. And lastly, number 10, let the front end do the work. Now this may seem completely weird as a Django tip, but many Django developers find themselves spending a large amount of time fixing up their front ends. So for some this is okay, but for others who aren't as skilled in the front end space, consider looking for ready-made templates or projects that you like. And this saves you a lot of time designing and developing a front end that you'll most likely change according to your back end anyway. So whereas if you can define your models and the type of data you're going to work with and then find ready-made templates that meet most of your UI design goals, you can focus more on linking the front end to the back end and not actually spending your time on the UI. So those are our top 10 tips for Django. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a comment down below if you'd like to see any more Django related content. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.